Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the floor the class of 2022.
Good evening. Please be seated. I am Janet Lenahan, and I have the pleasure of serving as interim provost. Welcome to the 2022 Spring Maurice A. Dean School of Law Commencement. Before I make the introductions, we remind all in attendance to wear a mask with, while they are inside the building. Graduates, you may remove your masks as you cross the stage. As part of the foundation of our ceremony today, we gratefully acknowledge the native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather, as well as the diverse and vibrant native communities who make their home here and throughout New York State today. We take a moment to recognize the original inhabitants of this territory, indigenous land, which we acknowledge as sacred territory, as the land of many tribes, including the Matinkok, the Merricks, and the Massapequa, in the miles around us. And now we begin our program. Always a good reason to clap, absolutely. And now, we begin our program with the invocation delivered by Reverend Joyce Brandon Dugar, followed by the national anthem led by Matthew Crawford, class of 2022. Will everyone please stand in body or in spirit? Let us pray. Gracious God, first and foremost, we say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the graduates as they continue their journey. Bless their family and their friends and put a hedge of protection around them as they begin their journey. And furthermore, we are praying very hard that they pass their bar the first time. <laughs> Amen. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. O oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please be seated. Now, performing our alma mater, is the Hofstra Vocal Ensemble, accompanied by the Hofstra University Commencement Band, conducted by David Freiling, Professor of Music. The words to the alma mater are on the inside front cover of your program.
I now have the pleasure of making some very special introductions, beginning with the chairperson of the Hofstra University Board of Trustees, Donald Schaefer. <laughs> Secretary and former Vice Chair, Trustee David Mack. <laughs> Trustee Arthur Kremer. and Trustee Fred Davis. I am also pleased to introduce the Hofstra University Deans. Please stand as you are introduced. First, your Dean, Gail Prudenti from the Morris A. Dean School of Law. Warren Fresina, Stewart and Nancy Rabinowitz Honors College. Kathleen Gallo, Hofstra University Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. Mario Murillo, Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, Sina Rabani, Fred DeMatta School of Engineering and Applied Science, Dan Siebel, Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which includes the School of Education, the Calico School of Government, Public Policy and International Affairs, School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts, and the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Holly Syrup, School of Health Professions and Human Services, and K.G. Viswanathan, the Frank G. Zarb School of Business. Please join me in welcoming all of our amazing deans. We are also joined by Hofstra's Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer, the Senior Vice Provost for Academic Affairs, and Vice Presidents, who I'm pleased to introduce as a group. And of course, the person who leads our university. Please join me in welcoming to the podium our president, Susan Poser. Good evening. It's my pleasure to welcome the graduates and families and friends to the commencement exercises for the class of 2022. And a special welcome to our honorary degree recipient and commencement speaker, the Honorable Eric L. Adams, the Mayor of New York City, who will be more formally introduced in a moment. My welcome this evening is not only as the president of Hofstra, but as a proud member of the faculty of the Morris A. Dean School of Law at Hofstra, and as a former law dean myself. So I know that the success of any law school depends ultimately on the quality and the commitment of the faculty. We are fortunate at Hofstra to have a faculty with a distinguished record of accomplishment in teaching, scholarship, and service to the legal profession in New York, nationally, and internationally. Collectively, the faculty has created the law school's outstanding program of legal education in the classroom and in the clinics while also engaging in active research and public service. Let's begin then by giving them a big thank you.
For the past three years, this JD class of 2022 has together experienced the trials and tribulations of law school. Even without a global pandemic, the law school experience involves times of high stress and anxiety. So I can hardly imagine what it was like for all of you over these past two years. And I congratulate each and every one of you in, for summoning the strength and the determination to get through it all and land here today at your graduation. I hope that amid all of the disruption that COVID caused, you were able to appreciate and take advantage of the rewards of law school. I have always thought of law school and experienced it as an intellectual feast. And only those of us who've experienced it know the effect that this education has on, one way, on one's way of thinking and one's life. In law school, one learns to think in a new way, to ask and be asked endless questions, to analyze carefully, separate the relevant from the irrelevant, and to write and speak with precision. And there are so many interesting subjects and areas of inquiry, it is sometimes hard to choose. And whatever particular area of inquiry one focus on, focuses on, its depth can never be fully explored. And you all sit here today, learned and accomplished, equipped with the tools and skills that we fully expect will be used to engage and improve the world in a grand or an unexpected way, or equally significantly, one client at a time. You possess a huge body of knowledge, and more importantly, a set of skills that prepares you for many possible careers, both within and outside of the legal profession. And I would venture to guess that right now, if you look around for a moment at your classmates, maybe look to the left, look to the right, go ahead, do it. There you go. You will probably catch a glimpse of a future judge or leader of the bar, possibly a future senator or a governor. And because of the versatility of the degree, you may also see a future teacher, an entrepreneur, community activist, sports agent, a small business owner, and maybe even a university administrator. And I know that you will certainly catch a glimpse, you have catch, caught a glimpse of some dear friends who will remain so for life. So as you consider all of the possibilities that are now in front of you, I want you to take a moment to remind you that a law degree is not just a professional credential that provides great opportunity for a fulfilling career in the law and in many other walks of life. It is also a signal to the rest of the world that you are a person who is intelligent, self-disciplined, and accomplished. And to be, to be perceived this way is a privilege, a privilege that you have now earned. And that privilege will open special doors for you, and I urge you to take all that you have learned and walk right through those doors to do great things with daring and courage, and always keeping in mind that with privilege comes responsibility to your clients, to your colleagues, to the profession, and to the law. And as part of that responsibility, I urge you to take this world-class education and also use it to serve others pro bono. Your expertise in being able to navigate the law is a powerful skill that can be used to help others and to preserve our constitutional democracy. So on behalf of Hofstra University, I promise that we will always be your university and we will continue to support you. Like you, we will continue to grow in strength and reputation, enhancing the value of your degree. We will also always strive to make you proud just as you have and will continue to make us proud. After all, one way to measure the greatness of a university is by the success and the humanity of its alumni, and you are now part of that legacy. And family and friends, today we present these graduates to you. I hope that you are very proud, I know you are very proud, as we are, of their hard work and dedication, 
which has brought us all together to celebrate today. And to the graduates, once again, I offer my heartfelt congratulations, both personally and on behalf of Hofstra University, to each one of you. Thank you. I would like to ask Donald Schaefer, the chair of the Hofstra University Board of Trustees, to offer a special welcome and introduce this evening's honorary degree recipient. Thank you, Provost Lenahan. Good evening. On behalf of the Hofstra University Board of Trustees, I bring greetings and congratulations to the Hofstra Law School class of 2022 on your graduation and welcome you, your families, and friends to this celebration of your academic achievement. We are proud of you and all the hard work and, de and the determination that you have showed to get to this moment in your lives, especially in light of the challenges you faced as students during a pandemic. Please know that Hofstra will always be here for you as you go forward. You are now part of the enduring bond of the Hofstra family, and we look forward to seeing you in the future and learning about what will surely be wonderful and interesting lives and careers. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Eric L. Adams, Mayor of the City of New York. He is 110th Mayor of New York and the second black mayor in the city's history. Prior to his election as mayor, Eric Adams served the people of New York City as an NYPD officer, state senator, and Brooklyn borough president. Born in Brownsville, and raised in South Jamaica by a single mom who cleaned houses, Mayor Adams underwent a life-changing experience at the age of 15 when he was beaten by police in the basement of a precinct house. Rather than being consumed by anger, he vowed to change the, the, police, to change the police department from within. He joined the NYPD and became one of its most outspoken officers, calling out racism and bias and pushing for major reforms. During the high crime 1980s and 90s, Mayor Adams policed the streets and was a founder of 100 Blacks in Law Enforcement Who Care. He rose to the rank of captain, helping to build the first computerized system for tracking crime in the city, leading to historic gains in public safety. From the NYPD, Mayor Adams moved onto the State Senate representing sections of Central and Brownstone, Brooklyn. In Albany, he pushed through measures to protect tenants and workers, combat gun violence, end the NYPD's abuses of stop and frisk, and advance human rights, including marriage equality. He also became the first person of color to chair the Senate's Homeland Security Committee. As Brooklyn's first black borough president, Mayor Adams advocated for smart policies and better government for all New Yorkers. He worked around the clock for his constituency when the COVID-19 pandemic struck the city, demanding more equitable relief and distributing PPE and donated meals to healthcare workers. Mayor Adams earned a master's degree in public administration from Marist College, and he is a graduate of New York City Technical College and the John Jay College of criminal justice. I now invite trustee and secretary to the board, David Mack, to come to the podium with his candidate for an honorary degree, Mayor Edric Eric Adams, along with President Poser, Provost Lenahan, and Dean Prudente. Uh, President Posner, in honor of Mayor Eric Adams, years of public service to New York City, the state of New York, for his record of professional achievements and works as a champion 
for public safety, health, equality, it is my honor to present him to you as a candidate for an honorary doctorate degree of human letters. Mayor Adams, it is my privilege and honor to bestow upon you the Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa in recognition of your leadership, your professional accomplishments, and your dedication as a public servant. Congratulations. Thank you, and congratulations to you as you reach this amazing milestone in your life. Uh, your family and friends who are here, especially, I think it was Yasmeen, because I've never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> Let me say this in my brevity, I could assure you that uh, my comments to you will be more brief than my bio that was just read. <laughs> I was, when I was running for state senate, I was traveling one night after we completed campaigning. It was about 2 a.m. in the morning. I wanted to see uh, my mother, who lived in South Jamaica, Queens at the time. I drove down the Belt Parkway, to pull up on the Farmers Boulevard exit. There was a car on the side of the road and the hood was up. And it was one of those days when Mother Nature did not know what she wanted to do. It was hailing, it was cold, the roads were slippery. And there was a gentleman under the hood. I pulled over and it must have been the law enforcement in me just to ask him, could I help? And in the back seat of the car was a woman holding a baby. I said, sir, are you all right? He says, yes, my alternator died and my battery died. If I could just get a boost to pull over at the Farmers Boulevard exit and use the service station. I pulled my car up next to his and pulled out my battery cables. And we attempted to connect the cables to his battery and mine, but we were in a dark place that we could not see the positive, positive and negative terminals. I didn't have a flashlight, he didn't have a flashlight. He reached inside his car and he pulled out a book of matches. I remember how we could use them to see the cables. He lit the first match, the wind blew it out. I took the book, I lit the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the wind kept blowing it out. Then I remember my dad, when he used to smoke, he will cuff the flame and prevent the flame from being blown out by the wind. We started looking at the cables and hooking up. We went through around 11 or 12 matches before we were able to get his car started and he drove off. Once he pulled out, I sat there for a moment and I started to think about the, that book of matches. I said it's an analogy to our life. Each match is representative of who we are. And the question becomes, what are we going to do with our flame? Some people use their flame to light the pathways of others, like many of you will do. Other people will use their flames to become emotional awesomeness and burn the hopes and dreams of other individuals. But there was something significant. It was not one match that completed the task. It was the accumulation of matches that allowed the task to be complete. 
You're not going to burn forever. Some of you are here, you may be first generation. Someone lit the path before you that allowed you now to be bright. The question is, what are you going to do with your flame? And remember those matches that the wind was blowing out? There are people in our lives right now in our city. Their flame's about to be extinguished prematurely. They're hurting. People are in pain. COVID has devastated us. Mental health illnesses is causing people to do painful things. Hurt people hurt people. And they hurt themselves. Just as I cuff that match, we need to cuff them. As lawyers, you're going to see broken people into the criminal justice system and the civil court system. They are about to lose their flame. And if you do not hug them and help them, they will prematurely be extinguished. But there was something else significant. There were pieces of matches that no matter how much you struck, struck them on the book, they wouldn't light. There are people you're going to meet in your life. They are mere insignificant pieces of paper with red tips on the end of them. They're never going to light. You need to just discard them and keep it moving. Don't let them get in your way. And don't be distracted. Let me end with this word. Euthymia. This is a powerful word. Sense of your own path and how to stay on it without being distracted. Euthymia. Not being distracted. Growing up dyslexic, walking into the classroom and seeing the dumb student on the back of the chair just to discover in college that I was dyslexic. I went from a D student to an A student in the dean's list when I learned it. Being arrested, but then becoming a captain in the police department. Being told what I couldn't do, wouldn't do, and can't do. From being dyslexic, arrested, rejected, now I'm elected. I'm the mayor. Stay on your path. Self-care. Take breathing exercises to know how the body operates. Meditate, yoga. Don't believe your career is everything. Who you are and your family is everything. It's not about just how much you make. It's how much we make of ourselves. You you must take care of yourself first. If not, you're going to spend your life making money. And the rest of your life, you'll use the money to take care of your health. 2000, at the beginning of five years ago, I woke up, could not see the alarm clock. The doctors told me I would be blind in a year. Had permanent nerve damage in my hands and feet. They said I was going to lose some fingers and toes due to amputation. Had an ulcer, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, the American package. And I could have easily have succumbed. Doctor said I had late stages of diabetes. I would be on medicine the rest of my life. But I determined to do something revolutionary. I went to Google and reversed it and said, how do I reverse diabetes? I learned that what I was eating was causing my diagnosis. A doctor in Ohio told me, Eric, if you change your diet, you can change your diseases. Three weeks after going to a whole food plant-based diet, my vision came back. Three months later, my nerve damage went away. My diabetes went into remission. My 83-year-old mother, who was diabetic for 15 years, seven years on insulin, she joined me, and within three months, she was off her medication. Why am I sharing that story? I had to step outside the norm. I had to step outside what people were t telling me, and I had to seek truth for myself. That's what you must do. You have the foundation of the law. Now you go out and define it, refine it, make it better, for everyone that's here. And you're in a good place called America. Nowhere else on the globe is dream attached to its name. There's no German dream. There's no French dream. There's no Polish dream. But done it, that's an American dream. Live through that dream. Enjoy that dream. Use your skills to help others accomplish their dreams. 
Congratulations to you. Good luck to you. Thank you. I think after those words, we really do owe a debt of gratitude uh, to Mayor Adams for being with us this evening. <laughs> you know, when I, when I listened to the mayor and I thought about what you were going through and the start of the, your path to what I know will be long, distinguished careers, I thought about all of us, and I thought about my own path as well. And as attorneys, I really believe that we do have a moral obligation to serve the public good. And, you know, Mayor Adams is a prime example of that. By sheer determination, and you heard his stories, whether they be in health or whether they be in his career, and his perseverance and hard work, the mayor has risen from really the humblest of beginnings to the highest and most influential, powerful government position of the mayor of what I consider the greatest city in the world. But I would be remiss, and I, I'm very thankful to him, and, and you know on your behalf I, I will write him a kind uh, and uh, thankful, thankful note. But I would be remiss if I didn't say to each and every one of you, I have total confidence in you. You can achieve what Mayor Adams is, can achieve, what I can achieve, what President Poser can achieve, you know, what Chairman Schaefer can achieve, because you are you. So having said that, I think we all owe a special thanks to our hardworking and extremely energetic President Susan Poser. are talented, and I have seen her talents now up close and personal, our talented interim provost, Janet Lenahan. <laughs> our esteemed members of the Board of Trustees, our chair, who gives tireless efforts to Hofstra University, Donald Schaefer. <laughs> the magnanimous, and I do mean magnanimous, and I, you know, I, I just, I was thinking about a word I could use to describe this gentleman. And you know, magnanimous could mean a lot of things. It could mean generous, it could be, but one thing it also could mean is extremely kind and generous. And so I, I say this university and this law school owes a debt of gratitude to the magnanimous David Mack. Thank you so much. We also have a new, for me, what's a newer trustee, but a gentleman that I am just so very proud of. What a fabulous choice as a trustee of this law school. And I know he has a special place in his heart for this law school and for this university. That's, our, that's trustee Fred Adams. So thank you so much for being with us. And I call them the un unsung heroes, and you'll know why. Uh, the dedicated Hofstra University deans, and they are truly dedicated and in, in many ways, you know, in many ways, no one realizes what it's like to be a dean until you are a dean, so I have great respect for them. But I have, a, you know, you know as well as I do at Hofstra Law School, we have fabulous faculty, we have amazing administrators, um, I've been blessed with wonderful co-workers, and we have gifted graduates, generous gifted graduates, I might say, but we also have, and I think it's one thing we all share, we have loving families, we have loved ones, and we have steadfast friends, and I am so delighted that they have joined us this evening. Tonight I want to speak to you very briefly, I promise. Uh, not as a commencement speaker, but I hope you think of me this way as one of your mentors and someone who is on your side. 
I have been in a hospital almost seven years now, hard to believe, and the dean more than five. And I've been privileged uh, to have met and interacted with so many students. And those of you who know me or have come to visit me know I refer to the students, and I really mean this. And I, I, I realized that the first year of my tenure as the joys in my life at Hofstra. Um, and you are a very impressive graduating class, the most impressive graduating class since, since I've been at Hofstra. And I look forward, I absolutely look forward to keeping in touch and sharing in your successes and joys that I know will await you. Hofstra graduates, you will always have a special place in my heart. Rest assured, I will do everything in my power to assist you as you start and continue your professional journey. I know you will be wonderful, wonderful lawyers. I remember challenges, and you may be thinking to yourself that you've dealt with challenge, and you faced challenge, and you struggled, but I really remember how I struggled to get my first job, and I couldn't get a job. I'd gone to law school in Europe. I came back after what I know some of you can relate to, um, a broken and unhappy love affair, and came back at home thinking I was going to be an international lawyer, but coming back to New York and coming back to Blue Point, Suffolk County, and, and to my roots. And I was full of doubts about practicing law. You know, I, I was ready to give up. I, I sometimes thought that our profession was not for me. Then one day, you know, my father said to me, I, you know, I got a job as an entry level clerk. I took in papers at the Suffolk County Surrogates Court. You know, I was a clerk. I took in, and actually it was a great job. And my father said to me something that really resonated with me. I think he knew, you know, I was heart sick and didn't really know what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And he, he knew I had admiration for the judge. And he said to me, you know, and my family, in my family, my father's brother called me Sis, okay? Sis, if you work really hard, you could be a judge. I thought, really, now he's really lost it. There had never been a woman who, was, who had been elected to judicial office in Suffolk County. And especially someone like me, who was struggling just to get her next job as a law clerk. How could I ever, 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 ever become a judge? But I have to tell you, those of you who are going to go work for judges, once you work in the court system and once you work for a judge, that's what you want to be, okay? Especially a great judge, and I work for quite a taskmaster. Anyway, I kept saying to myself, you know, why would he say that and why me? Well, he said it because, you know, our mothers and fathers, they unconditionally love us and think we're, you know, perfect, okay? So why me? Well, as time went on, I began to think, and this is what I want you to do. Why not me? You know, I could develop the skills and have experience and work hard and have a rewarding judicial career. And through hard work, perseverance, and great mentors. Believe me, my friends, make lots of friends and have lots of mentors. It's wonderful to admire people and take the good parts of their careers and the good parts of their personalities and being and copy them it's a, and, and ask for their help. And that's what I did. So the moral to this very true story is sometimes it's not how you start. Sometimes it's how you finish. But what did it take for me and what will it take for you to be able to meet your professional goals? First, set really high standards for yourself. This means doing a lot of hard work, but it's going to pay off. And I can tell you that you have to be the best lawyer that you can be. Your reputation follows you no matter where you go as an attorney. Next, always be yourself. You can't be anything else, so don't even try, okay? Um, 
there will be challenges, and, and I've heard challenges, but I think we've lived through crisis, okay, and we're still living in a crisis after graduation. And that's going to seem daunting. And I think you're going to feel like, like I felt. What am I doing here, and what am I going to do? But with strong determination and mentors and unconditional love and support of your family, I promise you, you will succeed. Success, I have found, is not a title or purely monetary reward. Really what it is, it is the ability to reach unique goals that you set for yourself, whatever resonates with you. <laughs> Remember that with hard work, giving back, having mentors, and a support system, getting involved and seizing new opportunities that may unexpectedly come your way, and believe me, they do, uh, you will be able to enjoy a very gratifying career. Even though today's ceremony does mark the end of your Hofstra law education, it doesn't mean that our strong connection will cease. You are and will always be part of our very extended special family, and I hope you feel a deep alliance and commitment to your alma mater. I hope that you are as proud of us as we are of you, and that you will remain involved and supportive of your university and our law school. Please know, and I think many of you do, that I am here for you, and that I will help you in any way I can. If you need an idea, or if you have an idea how I could do things better, or we could do things better, or a suggestion, or you would like my advice, not that it's always right, but it is heartfelt, please feel free to call me. My door, my mind, and my heart will always be open to you. Celebrating your achievements tonight are many people, like my very own parents, who never opened a law book, but who nevertheless played a most important part in your being here. In many cases, they have struggled and sacrificed more than they have let on so you could attain your educational goal. Although I do not remember, I must admit to you, uh, the details of my own commencement, what I do recall vividly is exactly where my mother and my father stood when I was admitted to the practice of law at the very, very back of a courtroom where I would one day preside. It was one of my father's happiest days. I will forever be comforted by his broad smile. My mother, well, she still was a little disappointed that I had not become a medical doctor. Your parents and your loved ones deserve gratitude and appreciation. Please thank them often and show them many acts of random kindness. At this time, would I, I would ask you a favor. Could you please stand up and turn around and join me and join all of us here at, on this podium and on this stage as we applaud their love, their encouragement, and their support through this journey on this memorable evening. I look forward to welcoming you home to Hofstra on many future occasions, at which time our paths will cross once again. I wish you the best of good health, the company of your wonderful loved ones, and a long, distinguished career. Congratulations, my colleagues. Thank you. I now have the pleasure and honor of introducing to everyone this year's Teacher of the Year, Professor 
Mark Niles. This is, as you all know, a very important award that expresses our law school's long and historic commitment to excellence in teaching as the most important marker of faculty success. Professor Niles, please come to the podium to receive your award. At this time, will the candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor please rise. <laughs> President Poser. I have the honor to present these candidates who have successfully completed all of the requirements for the degree Juris Doctor from the Maurice A. Dean School of Law at Hofstra University. I recommend, together with our faculty, that you confer the degree on these candidates. Graduates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and by the regents of the state of New York, and upon recommendation of the provost, dean, and faculty, I confer upon you the degree of Juris Doctor. We now ask... You, one moment. You are now entitled to all the rights, privileges, and opportunities afforded by your degree. Congratulations. Thank you, President. Thank you. We now ask that each of the graduates come to the stage to be introduced by distinguished professor and senior associate dean for academic affairs, Julian Koo, to be hooded by professors James Sample and Professors Kevin McElroy, and to be recognized by our president, Poser, Chairman Schaefer, and I am delighted to join them. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, no handshaking or hugging. <laughs> um, we're still a bit, uh, otherwise, please feel free. We're looking forward to this. All right, let's begin. Ivan Labakov. Matthew Lechner. Lomo Amar, summa cum laude. David Yagudiev. Joseph Rabanapur, cum laude. Jacob Samani. Evelyn Gitson. Jennifer Kendall. Taylor Attard. Christina Fratangelo. Sarit Hasid. 
Brianna Corbett. <laughs> Delilah Chamlin. <laughs> Laura Fallick. <laughs> Taylor Gonzalez. Loretta Kramer. Andrew Clay, cum laude. <laughs> Natalie Rivera. <laughs> Matthew Crawford. <laughs> Zeus Smith, cum laude. <laughs> Brian Kenny. Brian Callahan, Brent Mangan, Nicholas Zotto, Edward Flynn. Joseph Esposito. Aaron Daly, magna cum laude. Thomas Frey. Michael Bernardini. Jordan Miller. Ashley Stromberg, <laughs> Shannon Geary, <laughs> Kieran Emud, Jamie De, De Philippus. Nicole Gentilela, <laughs> Madeline Teal, summa cum laude. Oh. Samantha Menachucci, Victoria Pepe. Mia Taminsky, Brittany Ann Campbell, Alyssa Glasshagel, Victoria Reese, cum laude. Emily Fallon. Nicole Cipriano, magna cum laude. Michelle Catano, magna cum laude. Mary Serene Carino. Jessica Shemetchuk, magna cum laude. Nicole Lamana, cum laude. Karen, Caitlin McCracken. Constantina Leotis, magna cum laude. Okay. 
Sana Ansari. Emanuela Camille de Rosiers. Constantine Andriotis. Kayla Knight. Andrew Sivert. Jeremy Williams. Carlos Valencia. Zachariah Parker. Jelani Kali. John Margulies, cum laude. Aaron Rodebeck, cum laude. John Mariolis. <laughs> Sabrina Di Stefano, cum laude. Delia Thornton, cum laude. Okay. Daria Shudorki. Adrian Gutierrez. James Audet, magna cum laude. Lazari Rodriguez Marin. Srinidhi Krishnan, cum laude. Kevin Deng. Rhea Ramchartitar. Sarah Olson. Alyssa Sherman. Linox Payne. Christopher Leach. Emily Keelum. Brian Prim, cum laude. Yavar Chaudhary. Thomas Rieg. Rosalie Messina. Connor Johnson. Thomas Tyrell, magna cum laude. Abigail Rhesus. Patrick Sheehan, summa cum laude. Donald Pius. Kelly Fitzgerald, cum laude. Ariana Bianchio. Andrea Sakusa. Madison Hayes. Stephanie Brunner, 
Holly Hay, cum laude. William Oren Elsass. Paige William Seduma. Lance Rycroft. Elizabeth Doty. Erica Ellen Bross. Thomas Letty. Matthew Shustari. Jason Pastouche. Andrew Schumann. Peter Wilms. Alexia Willis. Stacy Nadell. Christina Pedra. Kimberly Puzo. Janine Santarelli. John Babcock. Danielle Ebekhausen, cum laude. Nicole Trotman. Gabrielle Caceres. Andrew Segura. David Lionel. Sean Brady. Elise Di Natale. Elijah Valencourt. Carrie Giovanello. George Stavropoulos. Nikesha Brown Edwards. Amber Harris. <laughs> Nafisa Clark. Navpreet Knott. Dana Pope. Cindy Singh. Maxwell Shavitz. Emmanuel Esposito. Ro Rohan Kokari. Kokarni. Nicholas Laginestra. Adam Gomez Abreu. Anthony Mackey. Lena Brostowski, cum laude. Michaela Weedman. Maria Hargel. <laughs> Rebecca Kirschman.
Jessica Lord. Kevin O'Connor, Jr. Amanda Bluver. Ryan Goldberg. Stephen Kramer, magna cum laude. Anthony Accardi. Matthew Green. Anthony Covelli. Brooke McDonald. Matthew Moretto. Colin Salvine. Michael Miata. Matthew Bruno. Benjamin Zaslov. Stephen Ficarelli, magna cum laude. Lauren Ferrati. Christopher Bluthkin, cum laude. Michael Haig. Lance Romero. Paul Benoit. Yuan Yao. Yu Bo Lee. Fiza Malik. Santiago Arube. Riyadh Nagi. Huzam Asez. Delaney Beckhorn. Sierra Anderson. Christopher Picciano, cum laude. Elizabeth Conklin. Amanda Brookhauser. <laughs> Kathleen McCardle. <laughs> Siddhartha Uden. <laughs> Anthony Montano. Nicole Adler. Maria Gorman. Serena Newberry. Rebecca Hood, cum laude. Jason Igelski. Cum laude. Michael Silberg. 
Alexander Pickett. Megan Hassan, cum laude. Heather Callahan. Constantine Nanis. Alicia Lai. Andrew Deckel. Jennifer Tabius. <laughs> Megan Nolan, cum laude. <laughs> Alexandra Mafla. <laughs> Crystal Kemraj. Jenna Stasel. <laughs> Haley Clancy, magna cum laude. <laughs> Sophia Tolinch. <laughs> Sarah Noraldine. <laughs> Avery Brogan. Gabrielle Davis. Dan Daniel Grabowski. Nicole Wong, cum laude. Jade Garza. <laughs> Nana Adwa Otu. Lee Merrill. Carolyn, Carolyn Lander, cum laude. Dar, Darling Gutierrez. Andrea Akambola. Kayla Staley. Ashkin Ogan Ogan Oganazan. Ashkin Oganazan. Okay. Valeria Piaches. Craig Cusano. <laughs> Kayla Schmidt. <laughs> Donna Marie Sirio. <laughs> Jacob Bloom. <laughs> Madeline Sudfried. Nicole Donadio, cum laude. <laughs> Julia Iocano. <laughs> Danielle Cerniello. <laughs> Julie Van Westendroop, Westendorp. Sabrina Rossi. Angela Criscola. Elizabeth Palmieri, cum laude. Joshua Lamudo.
Daniel Dutusa. Jared Nossen. Kimberly Manzi, cum laude. Jason Morin, cum laude. Okay, the shim. Sebas Sebastian Blanco. Michael Tanari. Daniel Sevilla. Kalisha Milton. Ikra Nakvi. Salman Aslam. Alexandra Sedlak Gonzalez. Taishin Kim. Mikhail Livali. Feladine Tanis. Crystal Armstrong. Yasmin Diodoene. <laughs> Yovan Igalate. Congratulations to all the graduates of the JD. The candidates for the degree of Masters of Law and Masters of Arts, please rise. President Poser, I have the honor to present these candidates who have successfully completed all of the requirements for the degree of Master of Law and Master of Arts from the Maurice A. Dean School of Law at Hofstra University. I recommend, together with their faculty, that you please confer the appropriate degree upon these candidates. Graduates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and the regents of the state of New York, and upon recommendation of the provost, dean, and faculty, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Laws or Master of Arts as appropriate. You are now entitled to all of the rights, privileges, and opportunities approved by your degree. Congratulations. We ask that each of the graduates come to this stage to be introduced by the distinguished professor and senior associate dean for academic affairs, Julian Koo, and to be recognized by President Poser, Chair Schaefer, and I am honored to join them. Mm -hmm. 
Laquasia Loben. Teresa Victor. Aisha Mainali. Akash Malrota. Aneth Casado. Lourdes Luzriaga. Congratulations. Each year, the faculty of the law school recognizes the special achievements of members of the graduating class by conferring upon them a number of awards and honors. This year's recipients were recognized in today's public service and graduates celebration and awards ceremony. And we will not announce all of them again during this ceremony, however, we do wish to again recognize just a very few of the class of 2022. It is my pleasure to first recognize the recipient of a very special honor at the law school. The Maurice A. Dean Award is conferred each year upon the graduate who has achieved the highest academic average in his or her graduating class. The award was established some years ago by classmates and friends of Maurice Dean, a distinguished alumnus who graduated first in his class in 1981. Mr. Dean was also the chair, Chairman Emeritus of the Hofstra Board of Trustees, and we are proud to have him as our namesake because he was committed and made a commitment to excellence. It is my pleasure to announce the recipient of the Maurice A. Dean Award for the highest academic average in the class of 2022, Patrick Sheehan. <laughs> Patrick, please just, just rise and let everybody, and let us recognize you. I now ask distinguished professor Linda Galler to come to the podium to recognize several other members of the class of 2022. I have the privilege of announcing four very special awards. The winners were selected at a faculty meeting by a faculty vote after full discussion of the special accomplishments of a number of graduating students. The first of these awards is the Distinguished Service to the Law School Award, which is awarded to a graduating student who has, in a variety of academic and non-academic undertakings, contributed to the progress and welfare of the law school. This year, we have three recipients of the Distinguished Service to the Law School Award. Delilah Chamlin. <laughs> Serena Newberry. And Andrew Schumann. The second award is the Gina Marie, excuse me, the Gina Maria Escarce Memorial Award, which is awarded to a graduating student who, in the opinion of the faculty, has contributed the most to her classmates' learning and understanding of difficult legal concepts through his or her questions in class and participation in class discussions. There are two recipients of this award this year. The Escarce Award goes to Nicole Cipriano.
and Jessica Shemeshek. The third award is the William Eric Goldberg Scholarship, which is awarded to a graduating student who, in the opinion of the faculty, has provided significant support and leadership in improving the quality of life and educational experience for others. This award goes to Nicole Donadio. And finally, the Christopher G. Gegwich Outstanding Law Student Award, which is awarded to the graduating student who, in her years at the law school, has shown a combination of those qualities and abilities which are the ideals of the legal profession. The winner of the Outstanding Law Student Award is Nicole Wong. Congratulations to all our award winners. We're almost there. So congratulations again to the class of 2022 and to the families and friends of our graduates, the mothers and fathers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents, nephews, nieces, cousins, children, and spouses, thank you for being here today, and thank you for everything that you have done to support these graduates. <laughs> graduates, please remember to share your future accomplishments with us and return to visit, to mentor students who follow in your footsteps, we need you now as role models for future law students because that's what you are, that is what you have become by virtue of graduating today and becoming alumni of Hofstra University. And we also need you as ambassadors for Hofstra to tell the world what is going on at this great law school, at this most wonderful university. You are now our shining example of all that we do and all that we represent. So once again, congratulations to the class of 2022, and Godspeed. Following this commencement, there will be a reception for graduates, guests, and faculty at the David S. Mack Physical Education Complex that is adjacent to this arena. I ask that the audience remain in place until the academic procession has left the stage. Congratulations. <laughs>